What are you drinking? This is actually the the number one beer in Germany on draft. It is the Bitburger. Some fancy. Nice. I, I left I, – so truth be told, I left the PBRs at the store because I just wanted to impress you guys. <laughs> go. Yes. Go. Go for go for launch. Chad, what episode is this, Chad? Episode number 116. How are you guys doing? Man, I'm doing uh, good. Good. Excellent. Most excellent. Caffeinated and carbonated and constipated. No. Yeah, so ready to ready to go, man. What what a what a fun time in Dallas. Never thought I'd say that. <laughs> you know why? It was fun. But it wasn't even Dallas. Uh, uh, Technically. I heard it through the Arlington grapevine. Yeah. Fun. Fun weekend. Yeah. It was it was good getting back up there again. And I, I can't remember the last time we were up there. It was probably when we did uh I think it was the last time we did played NTIF was the last time we were up there. Is that right? Or no, no. There, there was McKinney. McKinney. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Still a while ago. Yep. Yeah. We were supposed to play Deep Ellum last we year will. during St. Patrick's Week, but that obviously got canceled. So, yeah, that's coming. Good that's still time. coming. Poor David's. Poor David, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll still, uh, we'll, we'll get back up there for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we, we've, um, as we mentioned on the last, the last slapper cast, we'd, we'd, uh, we've, uh, sent the tracks to be mastered. So Christopher Longwood is hard at work right now. You can look, put your ear out the window and you can hear him banging away on that. So uh, that's good. And uh, we're, we met with, um, uh, some people call him Dorian. Some people call him V. Some people call him Vicente. We call him V. And we met with him about doing the artwork and the layout for the LP, the CD, and, uh, you know, some other, some other fun uh, little side side notes that are going to be hand in glove with this record. So very, very, very uh, productive few days. Is that yeah, that was, that was an exciting meeting. And he was just bu- bubbling over with ideas uh, when we saw him, that he was coming up with on the spot, which, yeah. I, which I, I take it is just what he does. So that was really cool. Yeah. He's been he's, looking he's, forward to, to working with us on this for a long time. Yeah. For, and, and we've mentioned it before, but for those who know our t-shirts, he was the one that did the silhouette in the forest with uh, with the um, with the skull. You know, when you look at it from afar, it looks like a skull. But uh, when you look up close, you can actually see us. And it's just just a just a magnificent piece. And uh, and he's he's uh, his work is is second to none. We've just seen his his layouts and his the designs that he comes up with. And like Chad said, as fast as he as fast as we spit out the song titles and the the material you know the the, the lyric he's already asked me for the lyrics which i we funny thing is we have never wrote lyrics down for any of these songs it was always a chore to get in the in in the studio and you know paul would say hey that's not what you said last time you know are you are you are you suicidal why are you saying that so uh yeah we're gonna have to come up with some lyrics now <laughs> so because he no, wants just, we'll just transcribe the uh, the master when it's done yeah he wants to um he wants, I mean, he wants to go through this thing with a magnifying glass, with a mi- microscope. He's, his attention to detail is, is, uh, is, is why he's so good, but he's, he's just, he's, he, he's a monster. Yeah. It was funny watching that he was, he was almost getting pissed off at himself that he couldn't stop thinking about it. He was just, every time he'd say something, damn it. And he'd start writing it again. So he's like, just yeah. give me a second, give me a second. It was yeah. really cool. All the notes that he was writing down, I was just like, hope he, remembers what he's what he's writing because it was just like a lot of like yeah his mind was just like constantly churning with, with ideas every time we said something he's like oh what about this what about this so it was a fun fun meeting yeah and he's also he's he, he, he's also so in touch with the environment too when we're the place that we were had had posters and and you know these signs all over the place and he's like oh that's the matte black and that's the that's the reflective Thing. And this is the, and just being able to just kind of reach out, it was, it was, it was kind of like having everything drifting by and just pick out what you want. It's like a, let's say, it's like a good, a good song, you know, those lyrics kind of just float by you and you're just able to, you know, the, the, the harder or the, you know, sometimes the crappier songs are the ones where you have to go get up and go look for those words or look for those ideas or look for those. Yeah. So very, very, very exciting to time to be, uh, to, 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 to be involved in this very, 
a <laughs> lot of lot of stuff, but just just the the ideas, and of course, sitting with them, you know, for the first two minutes, we were uh, overwhelmed too with new ideas too, stuff that we hadn't thought about, as you see it on paper and scribbles and ideas and arrows and clouds and th- just everything just kind of shoved in your face. You go, oh, wait a minute, what about so? There will be a lot of the, um, our friend Dalton had asked out. Uh, you know, he wants to he wants to be the first to order the the LP. And I, I'm, I think we mentioned it last time, the the vinyl, uh, the, 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 the reputable places that do vinyl are, are backed up, severely backed up. So the so the records are the LPs, the vinyls are going to be because um, you don't want to you don't want to just give them to somebody because uh, you don't want to give them to somebody that's not reputable because you're going to get a product that you're not sonically not happy with might look good on the you know but but you want to make sure we put this much time we waited this long we may as well <laughs> may as well get the get the right company to to do it but so we're going to have our, our reward music is going to have all that stuff and um you know it's going to be on all of our all, all the platforms and uh, you'll be able to find it but we're we're uh, we're we're excited too Eric got a call from our friend Luba asking us to do a uh, twang fest the Continental Club which I think we got three bobbing heads here that will play at the Continental Club anytime, any place, anywhere. Well, it's the same place, but that's mm-hmm. going to be first annual. Yeah, yeah, great lineup in that festival too. Uh, Mighty a, Orc, a lot of our old friends are going to be there. Yeah, Mighty Orc and Alan, Alan Hill, Alan, all these bands, and some new names I don't recognize. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing these these people. Oh, Jimmy Bizzatola. Yeah. Uh, oh. God, I've known Jimmy since we were talking about the vapor room the other night uh, here in town. I've known Jimmy since actually before that. Uh, but yeah, I knew him when he was just a lowly lawyer and now he's a rock and roll. Sing a great songwriter, great songwriter. Um, good, good singer. Always, always got a good band with him. So there was a song of his that you were, yeah, I remember you talking to him a while back asking about it. We could cover one of his songs. What song was that? Do you remember? Water. Yes, I do. Think yeah. You might still do that? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, I, I'd like to, um, I, I was writing yesterday. I was, I was going back to that Lemmy song and uh, just, uh, I, I was wondering too, you know, cause Dalton, had, um, Dalton Flint had asked us a few questions. We'll get to here in a second, but um, we, um, I was going, I was playing that Lemmy song. This is a song that I've written years ago. I mean, I, I don't know how many years ago, but I, I'm sure we have a rough draft of it somewhere. It was just you, me and Mike um, in, in the studio, just banging away. But um, yeah, I can't remember when. There's actually, Go ahead. No, there's actually a studio version of it with Mike that we recorded uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so I, anyway, I was going through that the other day and I was wondering to myself, you know, it, it, I've always wanted to do a motorhead song or, or, but I think this has got, you know, the amount of new stuff that we have here, you know, the amount of new stuff that we're, that we're going to work on new original stuff. It kind of pushes those covers back and back because we, we do have quite a few covers, a lot, which we just throw at Eric on the, on the day, on the moment. Oh, by the way, we're playing this one, two, three, go. And uh, it's it it's it, that's been really fun. That's always fun. But the the lure of going and taking a a, a cover song is is kind of has kind of been shoved down, but been been kind of squashed by the the new stuff and the, and the stuff that we're trying to the, the 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 frills, if you will, that we're trying to put on the stuff that we're doing now because it's it's uh, it's just lot, it's a lot of material. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff and we're we're uh we're, we're going to be announcing some some dates uh here pretty soon uh where we're going to we're going to take some of this stuff out some of these original ideas we just kind of kind of try them out and l- kind of let them breathe live that's what we we're, we're doing with with uh which we, we didn't get a chance to do with blackmatic this new record that we have we didn't get a chance to take them out and you know b- beat them up i always i always because it really is it's it's kind of you take them out and you know, like, like, like an old rug, you know, you hang it over a line, you just beat the tar out of it and you bring it inside and, and you say, Oh, you know, look at all those new colors and all this. Same thing with a song. You can take it out and, and you make it your own, more your own. You just grow into the song as you play it live. So 
well, I want to do that. And I want to, you know, so the cover songs are, they're always fun. It's always fun to play a song, you know, as long as you do do it justice and you don't, you know, so, well, I'm doing, you know, a reggae version of a Slayer song. Not, not funny, not cool. That doesn't, we don't need it, you know, do a, do it right. But, and again, that's just my taste. I know I'm, I'm opinionated, but yeah, those those songs need to need to see that. I, I I'd be interested in to to see what what I know we've asked before, but I'd like to know what songs people would what, what would be number one on their list for us to cover and that kind of stuff. Because we have a couple of we have a couple of songs that we're going to work on that that people would just not expect us to do. I remember the last van, the second last van ride was really enlightening. We were like, oh yeah, I guess we could do that. Oh, never thought of that, you know and so every song they, title was my idea. So, well, I know you didn't shut up the whole way. We didn't get it. We didn't get a chance. Oh yeah. I finally got a chance to speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's get to Dalton's questions. He asked us what our favorite record stores are in Houston. And he said, he, he mentions cactus music because they have a great metal section. Sounds. Very uh, true. I like six lagoon. Cause Thomas is a good buddy. And, and, uh, Whenever, whenever I order something, I order it through. I try to order it through him as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, just, again, I, since, and since he's expanded, I mean, the store is just, like, it's so incredible now. Great, yeah. Great, great stuff. And he deal, he's dealing, I mean, Cactus is great because they have, like, they got records, they got CDs, they have all kinds of little cool T-shirts and toys and stuff like that. And Thomas, you know, he's got mostly, it's mostly just uh, vinyl he also sells tiki mugs, which is something I'm into, and uh, and a couple little tchotchkes and stuff like that. But yeah, they're both. I mean, they're both great stores. You can find pretty much whatever you need at both of those stores. I haven't really been to any other any other stores in town. You know. Yeah, he he's right. That's Sigs S I G S Sigs Lagoon. That's right beside the Continental Club. If you're if you're on Winburn, no offense, Chad. Um, if you're on, you know, it, it it it's right across from the from the backyard in, in the Continental Club, and it's. Uh, but yeah, it's a great shop, and yeah, like Thomas has been, yeah. I mean, you've played in how many bands with him? Uh, at least two that I can think of: L Orbits and the High Roller. But uh, yeah, he's just he's just a good buddy. Yeah, and and there's also um, so yes, yeah, definitely cactus. I was just at Cactus the other day, and I picked up some Tony Joe White. Where'd that come from? But there's also Sound Waves, which I'm I'm. Uh, um, it's kind of turned more into a skate shop, but Soundwaves on Montrose, they have a really good selection of stuff. But yeah. I, I like you, it's Sigs and, and Cactus because it's, it's, they're people that we know, people that we've hung out with, Wind's, you know. Wind's great too. I mean, his staff, his staff there is great, you know, and they do the in-store thing with the beer and the yeah. little stage where they have bands play, which we'll probably yeah. book that for uh, the record release and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and Quinn is a big supporter of ours and big supporter of pretty much every local Houston musician. He he is one hundred percent behind you. Uh, it's pretty much a guarantee. But yeah, every time he's always interacting with our our Twitter account online and retweets everything that we post, and um, he's very he's very cool. And I I have set, Cactus has sentimental value for me too because that's really the first record store I remember going to in Houston when I was a kid. So when my mom and I moved into town. In the Montrose area, Cactus was the biggest record store there. And the later Sound Warehouse came along and all those other places that were there at the time. But Cactus was the original when it was at its original, original location by the Alabama Theater. It took up at this massive amount of space that I think Whole Earth now, if you go there, I think Whole Earth Provisions occupies that entire space. Um, but it was it was huge store. You know, I remember back in the day, it was mostly LPs, obviously. And then there was a, one entire whole wall that was cassettes. It's like a mile of cassettes. But yeah, I, I, sound, I used to really love Soundwaves too. And that was uh, really the original location, which was on Westheimer. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Uh, when it, it was much smaller than the current location, which was amazing to me that I don't know how they did it because they didn't have that much shelf space, but they always had everything <laughs> in that store. Every time I went in there looking for some, even the most obscure thing you can imagine, they had it in stock every time. Plus a lot of, they were, they were notorious back then for uh, CD bootlegs and stuff. That's where I first kind of discovered the magic of, you know, high quality CD quality bootlegs, which um, they call it imports at the time. <laughs> but yeah, Cactus is, is always going to be number one for me because I, I think we're just blessed that they're, they still exist because we almost lost yeah. them. 
And they, 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 just like everybody else, they got beat up during the shutdown, but they, they did everything to accommodate their staff and the people that still wanted to get to something. They were doing curbside. They were doing, I mean, I think they even did delivery for, for a moment, but just, just, you know, um, they have so much more, they have so much more, um, they, they have so much deeper roots in Houston, obviously, than SIGS, just because SIGS is off the beaten path. And you, you're going to see uh, Thomas when you're, when you're, you know, when you're going to see, you, you're not, you know, you're not out cruising, you know, you, you, you're going there to, you know, for records. And uh, he, he has got just an amazing selection of vinyl. And it, it probably is, it's probably the number one. I know Cactus added on and did a huge room of vinyl, but I think Thomas has got him beat as far as, quantity and 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 the the other thing is too you know i've I've said it a thousand times and i mean it when i say it it's a it's a delicate turn term i stole from the bible it's called fuck amazon if you go you want to get music you go and you see thomas or you go see cactus and you you get the the you know the local people you get your local records for you and yeah it takes a couple extra days but fuck amazon i mean they're just they're just anyway sorry there's a little bit of there's a little bit of grinding for a for a Tuesday morning. Yes, that's our Wolfman Jack. Peak. I can see it. Yes, yeah. I saw it. Looks good. Uh, okay, favorite record in your collection is the next question from Dalton. That's a tough one. That's, that's a great question, only because it's only matched by how long is a piece of string, or how long is a plastic band, um, because. Mm-hmm. I, I have I have LPs that I'm going through and I'm just not looking. I'm just taking the next one that comes up. It's just just mountains of LPs that I'm just putting on the the last one I did was actually before the weekend, before our Dallas excursion. Um, I put on a Rod Stewart record and I forgot I forgot what that kid used to sound like. Just and, and you know, love him or hate him. Boy could sing and always had a, always had a great band. So so you know the the album before that was Brothers in Arms, Dire Straits, and uh, there's a song on there called Your Latest Trick, and it has this saxophone guitar line that they do that just haunts me. It, it it's one of those things. If I listen to it, it's going to be an earworm, and it's going to sit in my face, in my head, in my body, in my in the air for for days. But that one line will just will keep me awake and will just, you know, so it's, uh, so th- those two uh, right now are just my fact, just because, you know, the next record up will probably be my new favorite. So I can't, I can't answer it. I can't answer what my favorite in the collection is. So well, I, another no answer from me back to you in the studio, Chuck. <laughs> Eric, I don't have one. <laughs> it's too hard. I mean, it's like picking your favorite yeah. child of which I have none, but right. yes. um, I hey, assume that hey, if I had hey, you, what you 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 don't none want to that I know about? Yeah, okay. None, none, none that I know. Of. Um, I don't really know. I don't. I don't. I don't really think I have a a, a favorite uh, album currently. I mean, I, I bought I, I bought more vinyl I think in the last year than I had probably in the last. But I also I also got my my parents' entire uh, vinyl collection too because they're looking to downsize. So I said I'm taking all the records. And I had three, you know, three tubs that were, you know, probably, you know, probably this wide or so. And I managed to basically, after going through everything, I narrowed it down to, to, uh, to one tub that I kept and I gave the rest to Thomas. And then Thomas went through it and gave me a credit at the store for whatever, um, was left over. Not a whole lot, but it was still nice. And, uh, but you know, so I don't know. Yeah. So what's, what's playing right now on your record player or on your car or on your CD player? What's, what's playing right now? Uh, I'm still going through that double bass drum uh, playlist that I that I made that I got from recommendations from my buddy Joe Bergamini, who I took a lesson with, and a couple other friends I reached out to. Is like, hey, what's your favorite double bass kick drum song? So, so I'm I'm kind of listening to that to you know keep myself engaged in the double kick stuff. It's got everything from you know you know Slayer and Pantera and Motorhead and Reverend Horton Heat and all kinds of. The one song that has double kick drum on the Reverend Horton Heat song, so a bunch of other bunch of other folks. So Dream Theater, Meshuga, Journey, Old Journey. Yeah, well, one new song too. It's actually not not terrible. The drums are great on it. 
and uh, mm-hmm. Ben Travers with with Tommy Aldridge. So that's kind of it. What were you saying? Was the was the song that wasn't bad? Uh, it's so. They did a record with Steve Perry back on vocals and oh. Steve Smith back on drums. So basically, the, the original lineup. I forget when it was, and the song called "One More." It's almost kind of prog rock, actually, for for Journey, which tends to lean a little more towards the pop side of, of yeah. uh, whatever genre that is, rock, I guess. Um, but they did they did the record, and then they were like, "Well, Steve didn't want to do the tour, so Steve." Uh, Steve Perry didn't want to do the tour. So Steve Smith was like, well, this is fucking bullshit. I mean, this is not what Journey is. And so he left to do his thing. So that's your journey lesson for the day. There you go. That's more than I need, ever need to know. But Probably. thank you for the journey <laughs> through the flow. The, the song is good. And, and, and the drum part is just like fucking smoking. So cool. Yeah. Chat. Uh, I've been revisiting Black Sabbath a bit recently and I've we keep forgetting, but I, I mean, I want to go back and listen to the uh, the Dio era stuff, uh, the stuff that Vinny played on after we talked about that so much. So I I really hadn't heard a lot of that until recently, and I was like, man, this stuff is really good, uh, just like Eric has been saying. Um, that and also, I, I shared this with Eric recently that there was a playlist of stuff that Tony Visconti has produced uh, with a lot of really deep cuts of bands that I didn't even know he worked with. He worked with this band in the early 70s called Carmen, whom I'd never heard of before. And they were kind of, I mean, they were, they were definitely flamenco inspi- uh, influenced heavily, but they were a little bit prog, a little bit kind of uh, poppy. And I don't know, but uh, it's really crazy. It doesn't really sound like it's from the 70s when you listen to it. It sounds like something that might be more recent. It, the, the closest analog I could think of is, is Gogo Bordello, which is, there is gypsy influences and Carmen stuff as well. And yeah, that was really, really fun to listen to really well-produced stuff, but they, it's one of those bands that they, they put out a couple records in the early seventies and then just everything went wrong for them after that. And so hardly anybody remembers who they are. Yeah. It's some good stuff. It's good stuff. And Eric, we, uh, uh, so you've been doing your, you've been doing your chats with Eric on Instagram. Can we link to that on this one? Uh, I suppose it's all on Instagram. Yeah, so if you're on Instagram, I know Eric's been uh, t- t- cheating on us. He's been talking to our friend Ash Sohn. He didn't even, you know, apparently well, Ash didn't well, was a private conversation. That was not. I asked yeah. him to do the Wednesdays with ECH thing, and he said, you know, being being British, he was like, sure, man, whatever you want. And I read that to be like, I'd rather not do that. And so I said, I emailed him back. Oh, hey, man, let's just let's just the two of us talk. I don't even worry about it. And uh, and we had a nice, very nice, long conversation uh, yesterday afternoon. After he put his he put his kids to bed, and uh, he went to the studio, and we visited. And he was basically we talked about everything that's been going on the last year and what's coming up. And I asked him about the Delamitri record and stuff that he's recorded this last year, and and uh, just kind of catching up. You know, we hadn't spoken since really since we talked to him uh, back whenever we talked to him, and. Uh, I, I commented on something like, uh, or I, I messaged him saying, hey, man, that was really cool what you just did or whatever. And he said, yeah, man, let's catch up sometime. So I, I said, sure, let's do that. So we did. And it was fun. Good yeah, he's such a, such a good guy. Such yeah. a, such a generous. I, I, was, I was thinking, too, about our, our conversation with him and with Vinny. And it was just for people of that, of that stature, we'll say, you know, to, 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 to be that generous with their time and just – you just it, essentially there is no time that it's just it's just whatever whatever happens as long as you're not sitting there you know filing your nails and staring out the window you know they're they're happy to share and chat and all that stuff so yeah um, he's he's yeah he's somebody, he's somebody now that i can actually can say with all honesty that i think he's a friend rather than just some guy that i know like or an acquaintance because you yeah. know Pretty, we had a pretty deep conversation last night about state of the, you know, the state of affairs of the of the world, especially with the coronavirus and, and the pandemic and stuff like that. And he opened up to me with, with a couple of stories about friends of his that got it, and some of some friends of his that passed away, and uh-huh. all that kind of stuff. And so, but they're looking to uh, Delamitri's looking to they have they have uh, fucking dogs. They have uh, um, the tour dates planned for. 
for September and December, and he's pretty sure the ones in December are going to go off. September, they're sort of like, we think it's going to happen kind of a thing. And, you know, Britain's starting to open up now a little bit outside dining because the weather's better and, uh, and, and some stores are starting to reopen and stuff like that. So they're kind of doing what, what, what we're doing, but not quite as, you know, uh, maniacal i guess about it so <laughs> that was my next question about the telemetry and they were they were gonna have if they had yeah, data. comes out uh that record comes out next week i think the new one and i've heard the first i've heard they've released two singles off it and they're they're both like total like this is what telemetry sounds like you know exactly what you're getting they didn't really change the format the, or the formula and it's they still sound great so uh it should be worth checking out when it when it gets released very cool yeah damn if, if you all haven't heard it, I highly recommend you go back and listen to episode number 98, which was, was when we talked to Ash. I th- one of the most engaging conversations I think I've ever been privy to. He was just really, really fun. And a lot, a lot, a lot of the stuff we talked about is still relevant. It hasn't been that long. So, yeah. So, so uh, what else do we have from what else do we have from Mr. Dalton Flint? Uh, he, say, he says, music, what music have you been listening to in 2021? or favorite release of the year so far, or most anticipated release. I know what my most anticipated release is. <laughs> Me too. I think we just talked about what we've been listening to, so we, we already... Yeah. Yeah, pre- there's, yeah, there's nothing new. There's not. I mean, there, there probably is new stuff that, that would be very fun to listen to and very enlightening. I'm not looking for it, nor am I... I, I you know, like I said, I went to Cactus yesterday and I picked up some Billy Joe White and some other things, but uh, just... Uh, I'm not looking for for new stuff. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to, and I'm I, I'm not I'm not on the, the reason why I, I mentioned Eric's chats on Instagram. What are you calling it? Wednesdays with ECH. Okay, so I'm yep. I'm staying away from even even the social media. I'm just keeping my phone off. Essentially, I'm trying to uh, shed the 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 weight of you know responding to every text as it comes in every email as it comes in just to because i'm booking shows and we're you know like we're juggling we're juggling the calendar and we're trying to make it work to where we can get out play some music and um and as it sits right now i've said this last week too but the the clubs that are opened the clubs that are definitely going to be open do not know what the capacity or w- what the turnout's going to be not capacity but they know what their capacity is, obviously, but they don't know what the turnout's going to be. So they, in turn, cannot guarantee what we usually command, you know, in, in a in a in a normal in a normal market. So, so we're we're juggling, we're uh, reshuffling, we're doing all kinds of stuff, trying to trying to, to 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 get out. I don't want to to just run around Houston playing shows. I want to get out and you know travel and you know promote this record. But it's very difficult to to essentially, you know, just come out as a full band. It's just right now it's impossible because we do not know what, you know, what they can what they can do, what these clubs could do. So a lot of a lot of a lot of uncertainties. But there is one thing that's certain is is we're 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 motoring right along with this record and the the. I, I can tell you right now the the layout, the design is going to be top notch. It's going to be one of those records that you can put in your collection, and it's going to look good beside all the records. So I mean, I, I'm just I'm thrilled about that. So yes, Eric, it may even be one of those records where you want to you know frame the album cover because it's going to look so badass. So you need to buy two I mean, records. <laughs> yeah, Dalton also asked us when are we going to be back in San Antonio. Which is where he's living now. Oh, um, cool. yeah. We just that's a good we question. Just, we just booked a show and just canceled the show in San Antonio. So uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was one of those dates where, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you. Okay, let's go. Okay, price is good. Everything's good. Okay, and then they call back. No, can't do it. Uh, management won't let us do. So we're uh, we're in and out of San Antonio already, but we're we're we're, we're not stopping. We're, we're we're calling these clubs, and we're you know we're going to make it. We're going to make it happen we're these tours are going to happen these these dates are going to happen we we just right now we're at a point where it's it's so difficult to to I, I just I can't say it any other way we're shuffling we're shuffling sand right now because nothing is concrete nothing is 
you know, nothing can, nobody can commit. So it's a, it's a world of uncertainty, my friends. We are looking at some vendors that have not been confirmed yet. We are just, just word of the wise. We're looking at some vendors that are at least north of San Antonio, <laughs> south of Austin. So we'll hopefully have some news to report about that later. But uh, we'll be around that area, not, not necessarily right in smack dab in San Antonio. San Antonio has historically been a, a, a tough nut to crack for us as far as booking regular, like having a regular venue there. We did for a while until they closed. <laughs> um, yeah. We really want to play there, but we have lots of lots of friends there, so it'll be nice. Yeah, same thing with Dallas. Plenty of places to play, but it's all right. We're going to build that bridge. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Dalton. Dalton also just joined us on Reward Music. He's been, he's been a longtime Patreon supporter, but now he's moved his <laughs> patronage from Patreon to Reward Music, as everyone should do, because that's a much better place to be. Yes, and uh, yeah, so uh, we're waiting on, uh, we, we had a couple of calls too for uh, actually a lot of calls this week, this past weekend in, uh, in Arlington. We had a lot of calls for work shirts. Um, so work shirts are going to be back on the menu soon. We're also going to d d see what the album design is so we can coordinate a work shirt that, to, to go with the release. And then, like I say, there's some other stuff and uh, some other stuff that, that we're working on uh, that, 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 like I say, it's going to go hand in glove with the record. We're just going to, we're going to finalize the, the artwork, get the master, uh, get the masters back and start that. So we're going to, there's going to be a lot of, really, like Chad said, the, the reward music is the place to go because we're going to try to do the one stop, you know, <laughs> have that be our launch pad. And, you know, if, if anything blackguard related, anything blagmatic related, anything related, you know, we're going to have it there and it's going to be, you know, we're still we're not going to shun the rest of the stuff, but we are going to use that as the as the main as our launch pad. Might be a good place to um, also pre-order the record too. Reserve your copy. That is exactly where you will go to pre-order it. You can pre-order it there, and everybody who is a Reward Music uh, Blagatron subscriber there will get to hear the record before anybody else. So that's where you want to be. But yeah, you'll, you'll get you'll get first dibs on pre-orders there as well. It's just. It's the best place for you to be as a Blackguards fan. So, uh, yeah. So this weekend, we're going to be at Ren, uh, Ren Fair and Campgrounds. Hogs. Yes. Yes, we're going to do the the hogs, the the, the dogs on hogs, D A W G S on H A W G S uh, in uh, Mission Bend. So we're going to do the it's essentially the Ren Fair grounds. They're going to do uh, they're going to do a biker rally. We're playing there. Excited about that. And then a brand new place in Richmond called Scotty's Saloon. And uh, yeah. really, 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 really happy about a new venue. And it's not in the, you know, in the shadow of the Houston town. So we get to, you know, stretch out a little bit. So really looking forward to that. And uh, also just before we hit the record button today, we're talking about getting together and making some noise. So uh, you never know. We may have a new, new uh, couple of new tracks for you to, to, to listen to when you come see us. So I hope you're all vaccinated and I hope you're all yes, yes, yes. And happy. We're delighted to have you. This very episode, we may see our good friend Elvirus. We're looking forward to having a young fella from, he's, he, he's from up in the, the, the Maine area, up near Portland, Maine. He's from a place called, I call it Shenanigans, Maine. It's probably called something else. But uh, he's, uh, he, he plays with a band called... Uh, the Punkabilly Rebels, the Outsiders. We're going to have him uh, join us. We're going to have a little, uh, we're going to drop it smack in the middle of this. And uh, we're, you're going to, and you're going to see a lot of him too. He's he's one of these people that uh, he could be a stand-up comic. He could be a rock and roller. He could be a beer salesman. He could be your neighbor from hell. He is an absolute gem. You're going to love him. Welcome. Hello. I like that backdrop, son. Hey, thanks, man. It's a 1970s uh, ski lodge <laughs> with a little uh, blasphemous, satanic fucking ghost outfit. <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to drop you into what we call slapper cast number 116. We tried to get 666, but we haven't got a big vocabulary. We're so close what we enough. Is, yeah, we've been saving up our... our uh, 
our we've been saving up our bandwidth and our computer space to get you on here. Now let me let me just introduce you. This is our good friend. We're going to call him the Lowered. You can call him. You can call him Tim. We met him first as Elvirus, and the ladies in Maine know him as the Main Man. So welcome, welcome to our. <laughs> My wife, my wife knows me as the guy who does the dishes if she yells at me. <laughs> Whoa! Can I? Uh, well, not yell. I not yells at me. Instructs me in a very uh, tone, Comma- uh, commanding voice. Very. Yeah. <laughs> Thou shalt do the dishes, and she parts them. Get your ass in the kitchen, Tim. <laughs> I get it. I get it, man. It's good to have you. Listen, we've uh, we've been. Uh, like I said, we did. We've already done this episode, but we're we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna do is like like when uh, the spread the good word of the outsiders. It was like a go a plane, and what we're gonna do is just drop it into this episode. And because of carpet uh, bomb, exactly <laughs> carpet. Uh, is that related to carpet munch? That's different, right? Potentially, potentially depends. Okay, I think good. it depends okay. on what what part of the the, the country you're in. If she's a librarian or a vegetarian, carpet All right. Well, listen, so we're going to drop in. Listen, we are delighted to have you on here. And just for a point of reference, we met you back in, Chad, what year? Don't say 1979. Chad, you're muted. Uh, Chad, you're on the Zoom mute. <laughs> Sorry. Chad, yeah, I think it must have been 2010, right? When Chris Buckley was still in the band. Yeah. It was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. You guys had that brown conversion van and... Mm-hmm. The, the the whole band complained about Patty just listening to Slayer from Houston to Portland. <laughs> Sounds about actually, right. Atta yeah. boy. <laughs> well, they 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 learned to love it. They yeah. learned to love it. They praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> That's it's almost like a a Nightingale syndrome, Florence Nightingale syndrome, <laughs> where your captor you fall in love with them. <laughs> yes, yes. And it they was have, raining blood that day, friends. Yes, and they 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 now learn to look, to go with the flow, if you know what I mean. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, so so um, if you could, in in three words or less, tell us about your band, tell us about Maine, and tell us. About, I'm just kidding, nothing. But uh, no, That's we, a lot we, of words. Um, uh, uh, how long has the Outsiders, Punk Billy Rebels? How long have how long have you been t- together? How long has this been a a band? So, so 2002 is when we started. Um, we've gone through a lot of lineup changes, as you know. That's just the way it goes. Um, but yeah, 2002. So, what's that? Is that going to be 20 years next year? Holy shit. Wow, yeah, 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> I was just a mere teenager. <laughs> and now I have a mortgage. Fun. Yes. <laughs> what, um, what are you drinking? Uh, Show us what you're drinking. This is actually the the number one uh, beer in Germany on draft. It is the Bitburger Pilsner. Some fancy. Nice. Ones. I I left. I, so truth be told, I left the PBRs at the store because I just wanted to impress you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you started in 2002, and my favorite, hands down, my favorite rockabilly band on the planet. Oh, stop. I know it's, I know, I know it's punk. I mean, you guys have got this, you guys have got soul, you've got chops, you've got attitude, you've got, it's just, it, it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant sound. And in true rockabilly form, it's a three piece. And no, when I say three piece, I mean every fucking piece of three. I mean, there is, <laughs> I mean, it's full, it's, it's, it's hard rock. It's, there's metal in there. There is punk in there yeah. and there's, whole lot of attitude so tell us so you've been writing this stuff the whole time right you've been the you've been the main writer singer guitar player right yeah uh so i started it 2002 and then uh matt bartlett playing the upright i I think you you guys played with us with matt playing the upright um i can't remember if it was matt or Derek who was Was filling in was he the bass player that you used to jump up on top of the bass Yes. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that Matt. It? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Derek couldn't support me because I'm fat. So anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and he's he's actually taken a hand in uh, writing a lot of stuff. And he's been with me since uh, 2007, 2008. So he's, so that must have been 
right after or right before we played with you guys in Portland the first time. Or maybe even the second time. Who knows? I don't <laughs> so Yeah. <old. laughs> wow. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, because I, I know the second time we came by, the, ne- the the second time we came through town, we did the the asylum uh, and uh the brick house. In New in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a f- oh yes. two nights. So fucking rad. Had so much yeah. fun. You guys, the consummate gentlemen's gentlemen's. <laughs> And I think yeah. the drummer at the time we had, Jeremy, the little – we called him Small Handsome because he was small and handsome. So <laughs> clever name, I know. I'm. How do, you, <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> it's a lot of uh, uh, broccoli. <laughs> I eat my vegetables and uh, all of my, um, my vitamins every morning, including vitamin B for Bitburger. Um, but I think, I think that was the time that the drummer almost got into a fight with your fiddle player. No, it was the guitar player. Oh, it was the guitar player. <laughs> yeah, our second, oh, we had a second. Yeah, we had a second oh, guitar the, player. Yeah. Yes. Oh, his pedal board got wet or something. Like he, yeah, yeah. Somebody something started like, like moshing or whatever. And, but uh, I, I got summoned like like a counselor. Like, Chad, he's he's threatening me. <laughs> Chad, he said he's gonna hurt me. The punk rock kids from New England, they're gonna hurt me. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was good. That was a hundred years ago. Yeah, it was. I always hate being in those fucking positions. I'm such a non-confrontational passive. Oh, you handled that so well, though, man. You, you, Did I? You pulled, yeah, yeah, you went. <laughs> so I said, I, you know, because the guy who, who pointed out, I, he said, look at this. He's doing it again. And I, and I, right as I turned around, the guy, the guy was pointing at him. I'm going to fucking kill you, dude. And I said, hey, hey, hey. You know, I pointed at him. And then he, he disappeared into the, the backstage area. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you said, what's going on? And then, uh, oh God, God I, I'll take care of this. And you went back there, and we all went back there, and the guy apologized, and you know, we, you know, it's fine. Yeah. But you, missed, you were, you I were missed, great. Missed I didn't see any of that. Yeah, I, yeah you were there. I know yeah. I was there. I just uh, didn't see any of this. Yeah. Just, just shit like that makes me feel like I want to crawl into my own rectum and just kind of disappear. <laughs> I just, I hate that shit. It's like, I'm not a babysitter. I'm just here to be a stupid fucking yeah. playing music. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through some influences here. You tell me if I'm wrong. Um, Hit me, baby. All right, you ready? Brittany, Brittany Spears. Yep, you got, got it. it. Okay, start at the top. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say Motorhead. I'm gonna say Little Reverend. I'm gonna say. Um, uh, I mean, I hear. This is what I hear. I hear Little Motorhead. I hear Little Little Sabbath. I hear Little. Um, I hear little, a, a lot of Elvis. I hear a lot of, uh, even, even those kind of Danzig, those dark, you know, those, you know, those just, just dark, but, um, and I can't, I can't, I can't give Danzig much credit, but the, the, the humor in, in the songs, you know, kind of leads me to, t- I, I, okay, just, just uh, go through your influences for us. Just, yeah, you, you just, you nailed, you know, some of the big, Top three there. Motorhead, oh, definitely. Uh, Reverend Horton Heat, definitely. Um, and you guys are in Texas. Of course you know them, you know? Yeah. It's funny. It's funny because like up these parts, like not a whole lot of people know. I mean, really? but then when when he comes to Portland, he would pack the place and then all those people would just like disappear back into their <laughs> respective uh, domiciles. Probably some sort of hobbit yeah. hut in the woods. You know, because <laughs> they would never come to our fucking shows. <laughs> what, 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 now, why is that? How, how do you how do you find those people? I mean, obviously, we don't know how to find fucking people. But I mean, do, do, do they drop in from outer space? Are in they are I they in? A, it's like fucking strange. Come, coming to my, uh, our shows or like Reverend shows? <laughs> yeah, your shows. I think a lot of them are just like, uh, you know, people like kind of wandering down the street. Like one of the 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 best places we play up in Portland is like uh Geno's cause it's like the CBGB's of uh, Portland, Maine, you know, they've been around for 125 years. Um, not really that long, but uh, Portland house of music, but like, it's just, I don't know. It's word of mouth, like in the scene, like, and as you guys know, times have changed where like, you're not going down on Wednesday nights downtown to, with your staple gun in a pile of flyers, every telephone pole, you know, now it's like, all right. I posted for the show. 
<laughs> let them come. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's 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 boost this post for five dollars. See how many people come. Thanks, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, fucking douche. Ex- that fucking exactly. robot. I hate him. Yeah. 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 It's, Data. It, it, it's so fucking <laughs> frustrating because we have no we have no control. Back in the day, if you if you flyer two hundred cars, you would get fifty people, or you know, yeah. essentially, you would get X amount per per you know stack of flyers. You would it would equal. But nowadays, you can't boost the. So you can't put five hundred dollars in there to get five people. You've got no it's, idea. And what pisses me off is you've got a product. You have, a, and, and I hate to. I mean, the the, the the reason why I say Reverend is because he's, the uh, you know, Reverend Horton, he'd been around for so long, but they do it so mm-hmm. fucking well. And they have, the, yeah. and, and again, you, you, you don't want to, you don't want to be that, hey, if you like Brute, you'll like Axe body spray. You know, you, yeah. you, you can't do right. that. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah, but uh, I, I know what you're saying. Hey, do you like yeah. this band? Come check out the band that sounds just fucking like them. <laughs> No. Yeah. We're our own That's, thing. Yeah. But 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 here so here here's what here's what kills me. You have a rockabilly band that's top fucking notch. And I love rockabilly since since Elvis said, uh-huh, you know, since <laughs> fucking hiccup on a microphone. I've loved rockabilly and I'm yeah. older than you put together. So I you know I listened to it for so fucking long. And and the thing about rockabilly is you can't fucking hide when you've got that fucking hair and those jeans rolled up and your boots and yeah, you can't fucking hide. So I know you, motherfucker. Get why aren't you? <laughs> no, you know. And and it's so it, I was gonna say it's so funny because I I remember years ago, like because there was no social network or anything like that. You know, back in my day, uh, I remember one time my wife and I were at the mall because that's what people did, I guess, back then. And there was yeah. this cat with like a greased up pompadour and cuff jeans. I was like, hey man, you like rockabilly. What? And I'm like, <laughs> and now it's commonplace because like all the hipsters. I, I've been yeah. called a fucking hipster. I it is offensive because like what? What do you mean hipster? And it's like, oh, I used to think, look at all these rockabilly kids and punks and shit. They're like, um, do you like that independent artist, that girl with the, the big glasses and a wide brim hat and high waisted jeans? That's yeah, so I <laughs> I cuff my jeans and grease my hair because it's, you know, it's how I feel. That's painful. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. Ask me how I feel about fucking pop music. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 there's, so it's impossible to get that crowd out. And, 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 the, and I'll tell you something else. These promoters that I've spoken to will tell you that the biggest return they get on their tickets, the biggest drinkers that they have, is the rockabilly crowd and nobody there, there's no second yeah. place it's first place and then fifth place they're at yeah. rockabilly crowds and the rockabilly show when they did you know uh the reverend shows or when they did those those um uh super God, suckers is another one they're they're always so, yeah touring with them um but i there was there was a uh, the name will come to me uh uh chad our friend bob uh, full hours. His uh, he, he did a rockabilly. They did a they did a car show rockabilly thing, and those things go great together, obviously. But um, uh, the the name will come to me. But they did a rock, and he said that they didn't have. They ran out of beer. I mean, they ran out of beer instantaneously. I mean, these fuckers drained the bar, and they were just the whole show was just trips yep. to, to the store and and beer companies dropping. It is. It's yep. just a so no two. And our friends too, the, uh, from the Drunken Monkey Privateers here in, down the street, they go to they go to the Rockabilly Festival in Vegas every year. And oh, Viva and, Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! They cannot keep up. They cannot keep. I mean, these these you know. So it, it is. It's it's a it's an out and out throw, and that's why we had so much fun playing with you. You know, with your band. Um, and also, you know, not not forgetting, not ever forgetting pub crawlers because they were the ones that. Of course. Hey, Andrew, you know? yeah. He's the yeah. one who, uh, he's like, he called me like the night before or something. He's like, dude, my pals from Texas are coming. We can't do it. And I was like, hush, honey, say no more. I got you. <laughs> and we played. And of course, it was at the fucking Big Easy, uh, which shout out to Ken Bell because he, he ran that place. It was fucking rad. Now he owns House of Music, which is even better. 
But uh, um, that place was fucking top notch. I mean, the sound was great. I mean, I think there was a good crowd there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't know. That was 400 years ago. <laughs> 125, I thought. I, I'm oh, doing- yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I, I, I got COVID it- time, time keeping in my brain right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're right. 400. Damn it. Well, one of the things I remember from that show is uh, in the middle of your set, the drummer started taking his drum kit apart and moving it in front of the stage. Yeah, uh, down uh, down on the floor, yeah. Yeah, you're just like, oh, what's going on? I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Shit. So, oh, my God, you played – because the next time you were up with us, we played – yeah, so at the Asylum Ooh. and um, uh, Brick House was Jeremy. Okay. Yeah. I, I, got, I got him backwards. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> you play so many gigs, you fucking forget. But oh, that was – yeah. The, the it was night only two years in between or something, yeah. Was it? Yeah, so two or three years in between. But it's years. been twenty years in between. It, though, between yes, the first one. So, <laughs> yeah, essentially. But uh, uh, I'm sure Pat Patrick uh, told you that uh, we might be working on something here uh, coming up. I've uh, I've been on my guy. I've been uh, pressing him. Excellent. So, and yeah, that's, uh, cool. and that's part south of here, but north of you. Yes. And yes. Where could it be? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, so and, and how are the pub crawlers have you seen them have you seen any sight or sound of those guys uh i i have been so isolated i haven't fucking seen anybody just you know just like everybody else going through um the isolation shit but uh i i i've i've talked to andy you know texting back and forth and uh yeah he's going stir crazy as yeah. you know everyone is but um, uh, I'm trying to think of who I've seen. Uh, definitely not bands. <laughs> yeah, because because we're still no we're joke. still on. Uh, you still shut down up there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, mask mandate was lifted in New Hampshire, which is ten minutes down the street, and but it's still here. So I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I just I don't know every you know every so I own a beer store, and it's in my front yard. But somehow it's fucking twenty minutes late to work this morning. <laughs> it's literally like fucking 350 feet from my my front door uh <laughs> but like every customer that comes in is like i'm so sick of wearing this mat i'm like oh, are, are you cool nice <laughs> and it's it's so weird being the centrist i'm not going to politicize anything i'm the gg allen of politics both sides fucking hates me it's great <laughs> I'm going to start flinging shit at everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you do know who – you guys know Gigi Allen, okay, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the best music, but great to use this <laughs> metaphor, like you said. I was trying to find – I got a, you all right. I have a Gigi Allen doll. and I, I, it, <laughs> Of course oh, you really? do. I was going to show it to you, but <laughs> – Instead, you're showing me your muff. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> So I was no, but yeah, it was sitting right here. Of course, it's fucking gone. God damn it! There's how 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 often do you get a chance to to reference make Gigi Allen? And the, yeah, so there you go. So yeah, anyway, damn it, Gigi. G- G- yeah, no, he's the ghost of Gigi. He's in the toilet. It's coming up. It's yeah. flooding. Uh, so so let me ask you. Uh, um, okay, so we're 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 gonna jump around here a little bit. Let me ask you this. Uh, Give me the give me the first song that comes to your head that you haven't covered that you want to cover. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Does it that's harder a, than it looks? That's a creative writing exercise, I think, for us. Uh, okay. Band band leaders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Chad, I, Chad, I, give me give me a song. Song that we that we that I'd like to cover that we haven't covered. You heard me. Uh, I would say the one that we already just talked about. I want to do. I want us to do "Boys Are Back in Town." Ooh, that was it. We've we've talked about that many, 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 many times. We've never actually yeah. played it. So yeah. All right. Um, uh, okay. What about make- you? What go, going back to you, Patrick? What song do you think you want to cover that you haven't covered before? Go. I want to do a, a song called um, uh, 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 sticks and sticks and sticks by um, sticks uh, by the BJ <laughs> by the BJ. Sticks and st- sticks. 
Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, sticks and something. But it's 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 it, a Bee Gees number. I was listening to it today. Really? Yeah, it's very That's bad, surprising. Bad, 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 but yeah, it's very very sweet Caroline kind of. But oh, really, really, really. all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just I'm just I'm just the. <laughs> Carlo, gang, gang, ga, da, 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 just that kind of gang, Sally, Freebird. <laughs> wow, we, we, we just got, we, we don't we mention just, Sweet Caroline. <laughs> it's we, it's banned yeah, in Harrisburg, yeah. actually. It's banned that's in our, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Wow, that's our, that's our opening song. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Is that is that because of the Red Sox, or is that because it's just the the worst song, second, third worst song ever? I think maybe it's just because I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Came <in all. laughs> Chad, Chad, marker, marker. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to put a lot of editing in there. <laughs> this is like our podcast. Peter will always be like, "Dude, you can't say that." I'm like what? <laughs> yeah, what? What? The, I've listened to your podcast, man. It's really, really great. I'm sorry. Uh, Oh, oh, you like? No. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's cool that y'all <laughs> y'all actually discuss current events and stuff, and, and it's it's uh it's really it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it's a way it's a way for um Peter to really bring up my blood pressure and for me to <laughs> repay him in kind <laughs> <laughs> by him going no no pause pause. <laughs> yeah, we we featured uh, you fellers on there. Uh, I I know twice. Thank you, thank you. Once is nice, but twice is even better. So how did that get started? Was that something y'all have been thinking about doing for a while? Or is it just a pandemic type thing that you just... Panic panic mode is what... Panic. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I need to fucking do something or I'm going to go crazy. And he came to me and I I had a couple people like pitch it to me like, oh yeah, you should do a podcast. I'm like, "Uh." I mean, I know I've got a great radio voice, but... uh, I was just like, no, I don't want to. That's silly. I don't, I don't yeah. want to do that shit. Yeah. And then uh, Pete came to me and was like, dude, we should do a podcast. I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> He's like, I don't know. Yeah. How about we just drink and bullshit? I'm like, all right. Well, we could do it here at the, the brew shop and we have beer. All right. And then just like it kind of spiraled out of control, like creatively as far as like, I'm like, oh, we should do a segment called What the Fuck Am I Drinking? And then I did like this like 30 second uh, tagline where it's just like people going, what the fuck? What the from like movies and stuff. And then <laughs> and then it's uh, I think it's Steel Panther going, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> so it was clever. And then we they, we drink like uh, uh, like customers drop me samples all the time. And sometimes cool. they're good. Sometimes. Not so. No. Yeah. So when did you open the beer shop? So as a standalone business, I opened it 2014. Uh, but I was doing it since 2012. Um, and I was I was a mechanic. I was an automotive repair technician and diagnostician for an automotive dealership who shall rename, remain nameless. So when I worked at Prime, uh, <laughs> uh, so I was I was in the industry for like twenty years, and just it's it's backbreaking and it's hard work, and there's a lot of thinking. I don't like to think as much. I like to creatively think, not problem solve like that shit. Mm. So uh, I tossed that in and opened the the shop over here, and it's been awesome. People way happier to see uh, the guy selling beer with the fucking. Marty McFly dog, uh, who is cute as a button, uh, over the mechanic covered in grease going, well, you see your problem here is you're out of blinker fluid and you're fucking stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Check engine lights on because it's saying, check the loose nut behind the wheel. (laughs) (laughs) So so do do y'all get beer like from all over the country or? Overseas yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, there's a ton of beer. I mean, I got a, It's like 720 square feet, so it's it's a l- little space, and um, so I try to pack as much as I can in there. Um, but uh, I've had Shinerbach. I know you're going to ask because you guys are Texas, but uh, <laughs> no Pearl or Lone Star yet. Lowered oh, willing, lowered <laughs> willing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. 
what and what's the what's the just so do you do the local all the breweries and all that shit around there? Do they no. bring their stuff? To you? No. Oh yeah. Well, oh, I thought you were saying asking if I go to them. No, 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 no. I I know Why? you. <laughs> I'm a hermit. I, us celebrities, as you know, have to stay hunkered down out of the yeah. limelight when it's not performance time. That's why I was in the green room in this uh, Zoom <laughs> Zoomcaster. What the fuck it's called? <laughs> Doomcaster. Doom. Yes. Doom. Doom yeah. metal. Yes. Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats. Anybody know them? No, no I love the name though. Uh, check them out. There's this one song. It do so Sabbath. When you said Doom, I thought. Oh, it was. oh nice. It's called Stream of Consciousness, man. Just get with the program. Go, go for it. Go for it. Let it rip. Don't, don't hold back. I don't, I don't want you that. This. Don't I unleash that dragon. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. We've got, we've got double glazing on this shit. This. <laughs> hey, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, this uh, uh, I'm just gonna make a really bad joke. Go ahead. Go. Go, go for it. About bad double, joke. double glazing. The three of us <laughs> in one room. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible. You're gonna have so much editing to do. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't edit. He doesn't edit. He credits. He doesn't oh, edit. Geez. So let me ask you this: I, sure. um, I, You've only got three seconds to answer it. So I'm gonna ask you right now: Favorite outsider song? Go. Oh, you can't. You can't have a favorite of your own. They're all yeah. your children. You love them equally. Some are bastards, and you're like, oh, I don't want to fucking play that one. <laughs> but I mean. Uh, uh, if I had to pick, I mean, I know we've been on a writing tear, so we have so many. Stop counting down, Patrick. Uh, uh, I'm only joking, really joking, but yeah, yeah. So writing tear. What's so your favorite one right now? Just top of your head. Um. Uh. Well, we just wrote a new one, so uh, it's going to be the intro for the next EP. So we're doing a series of three EPs. All right. Um, you ready to get your minds blown? Uh, so uh, the, the whole praise the lowered thing is going to be three EPs, six songs each. Uh, so clever. And uh, clearly the, the blaspheming is just a, a, a shtick to really get a knee jerk reaction. I was hoping people would get so mad that they would mm -hmm. just be like, you see these guys, they're doing this. And then they do the advertisement for me. Um, and then I did the, the, the pamphlets, the, the trifolds I sent to you. Fantastic. Right. I have, I have them right here. I can find I, them. I, I meant, I meant, to, I meant to get one so I could have it readily available, but we're doing, uh, so three EPs. So, uh, praise the lowered one, two, and three. And, uh, because we're doing the holy or unholy Trinity, uh, it's the, the daddy, me. The kid, which is Merck, Saint Merck of Diabetia. There it is. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You too can Beautiful. have one of these. <laughs> spent, a, spent a lot of time on. I know. You can see. <laughs> this, this is this is gold. The, the the seven tenets. Don't be a douchebag. It's one of them. <laughs> and uh, people have accused me of breaking that one over and over again. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> So, so we're we're in the process of uh, recording the second one right now, um, and it goes everywhere like ADD in audio form, and um, so it goes from like a uh, this orchestral tune. Thanks, Garage Band, for having fucking strings. Uh, <laughs> to like metal drop D metal. Um, to like a traditional surf song to like a Johnny Cash. Um, actually, Matt Bartlett wrote the, the, the closing track called uh, Man's Worst Best Friend. And it's all about, uh, you know, demons are a man's worst best friend. And they're just like trained dogs. And it's actually really clever. Cool. Yeah. So we're in. So as we're recording that, we're kind of writing and figuring out how the third one will go. And then uh, hopefully if everything goes according to plan, uh, we'll release all three as the unholy trinity or unholy trilogy of the unholy trinity, which will be the, the three of us. And we'll break it down into sections. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very cool. So it'll be so 18, 18 songs. But the first, all, all, 
Sorry, is this all self-produced, self-recorded? Stuff uh, makes all sense? The first one was recorded um, here in uh, Shapley by um, Glenn Travis at uh, Studio 138. Uh, or 131, excuse me. Um, but Merck, uh, our drummer, he has been on a tear during this 13 months of buying all the fucking recording equipment and digital stuff. So we've just been uh, just ripping shit up. So we're going to do, we're in the process of recording the second one. We're doing an, another split. We did a split with the pub crawlers 10 years ago. Whew. 10 years ago um, where we did like they did traditional Celtic tunes they covered and we did traditional bastardized country songs. And uh, so we're going to revisit it 10 years later and release another one. And then we're just recording a bunch of like covers. We're going to put on our YouTube channel, uh, which are just fucking covers. I mean, we're just recording them and we did uh Demonica by, um, uh, the dwarves, uh, bl- uh, not Blitzkrieg, Bob. Uh, Bonzo goes to Bitburg. Bitburg. Uh, by the by, the Ramones. Uh, we started Police Truck by Dead Kennedys, but I don't know what happened to that. Uh, and then uh, there's another Dead Kennedys one. I thought I don't know, but we done it. We did a bunch of shit just to have content out there. As you know, you need to if you're not paying the. The Mark Zuckerberg Piper. You got to put shit out there and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. R- yeah. Ruffle feathers if you want to start a church. The Fellowship of the yeah. Lord. <laughs> so, so favorite song, top of your head, go right now. Oh, of the Outsiders? Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't know. Uh, uh, sure. Chase the Moon. I'll say Chase, Chase the, moon the Moon right now. That's 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 just been put on YouTube, right? That's the new one on yeah. YouTube. Well, so that was a that was an iPhone recording. Oh, uh, everything I recorded off the iPhone and put it in GarageBand and just cleaned it up best I could. Very cool. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> hey, listen, we're gonna we're gonna link to all this stuff. So um, oh, thank you. Um, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm blown away because we we met you guys and it was it was a it was a machine back then and now. It's a it's a machine that that needs to be feared. If you're not in the mood, for, if you're not in the mood for, for 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 rock and roll, not only are you fucked, but you're you. you <laughs> I mean, it, it it really is truly, and I I would say this shit behind your back too. So it's it. I, mean, um, I appreciate it, and I I hold you guys in such high regard as well. I just need to say that, and it's not it's not just uh, reciprocating uh, uh, pleasantries. No, it, I I truly enjoy. Uh, your band, your 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 style of music, uh, the standard CD has been in all of my vehicles since uh, oh, I bought it from you back then, and uh, on so many playlists, and I've sent it to so many fucking people, and uh, I, I cannot stop singing your praises. Yeah, no, I, I and I, I I know for a fact that that's true because we you, you and I have have been in touch for so long now it was it, it, it it's so strange because we were we were blown away like a, you know in 2010 when we first met and and but for for somebody to keep that keep that pressure on and just keep adding to 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 uh uh because you know i i i feel like blackguards are, are are much the same as yourselves because we we kept um, mind you, it's only Chad and I now, but uh, we, we we had to keep adding on and keep up the game because you can't you can't just run straight across. You have yeah. to, you know, you have to take that and and you know we do a lot of fucking around, um, you know, yapping and stuff like that. So, but there is that you know, there's nothing that we take more seriously than our 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 band, you know, than mm-hmm. our, our and our product. I mean, all of us agree. I know, but. You, uh, the reason why the reason why I was so enamored with Outsiders because, uh, um, you know the the the, the level of the, the the level of tongue in cheek, the level of sarcasm and humor is equal. It matches the the ferocity of the band, and, and ferocity is not the but you you get the, the yeah, the, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Compact. You know, I thought you were just being nice that time. I was like, oh, <laughs> he's he's a swell feller. 
He's from <laughs> Texas. He's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think we're that great, but I th- he said a lot of nice things. He's a, he's yeah. he's all right. He was just telling us what we wanted to hear. We'll never see yeah. him again. Goodbye. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the Slayer. Enjoy the Slayer, Chad. <laughs> And Eric, you'll get to meet him next time because I know you're off to the Big Easy, so uh, you'll get to you you get to meet him. But he will be back because uh, you you two have to meet since you're you probably shared the same stage, if not the same venues, maybe even at the same time. A couple of goddamn Yankees. Yes, yes. So, reward music. Yeah. Blagmatic. New venues. Rock and roll. Thank you for listening. Don't go change it. <laughs>